Okay, so I don't know if you guys remember Gina and Jordan, but they ended up just buying a house in Wicker Park. It's a beautiful house, and they're starting to decorate it. And so we had bought something for them for Christmas, but we're actually going over there for Gina's birthday dinner tomorrow. So I thought that maybe it'd be a good idea to just like finish up the project and give it to them now so they can incorporate it in their design. I'll show you guys what it is. Okay, so originally this little gem here, when we got it, it was actually black. But I wanted it to be white because most of their decorations and everything is white or whitewashed or white and black, something along those lines. So what? I'll, I'll give you the quick rundown of the story. Okay, so the reason why I want to do this is because when they bought their condo before this house, their realtor actually gave them a housewarming gift. And it was this huge canvas painting. Okay, so... Gina and Jordan actually have two of these little French Bulldogs. They have Winnie and they have Pearl. Now Pearl is actually white with a little bit of black spots around her eyes and a couple of spots on her back. And then Winnie is kind of like brownish, tan color. So I didn't necessarily want it to look like just one of them because then I feel like the other one's going to be left out sort of. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to base this off of that painting that the realtor got them. The realtor got them a painting. But you know how like, when you paint, you use different shades of color to make it look, I don't know, realistic, I suppose? So what I want to do is I want to turn this guy, this little 3D guy, little figurine thing, into a real life version of the painting that the realtor got them. So I painted him white, and that was kind of a mission because like I said, he was black before, and so like I had to really build up the color and get it to be 100% white. Uh, top, bottom, and everything without getting any runs or any contaminants in the paint. So now that I have him white, I'm going to start painting, literally painting him as if I were painting on canvas. And then hopefully at the end, he ends up looking like the actual painting. Once he looks like the actual painting, well, and it sucks because I don't have the reference of that painting because I didn't take a picture of it, but once he looks like a painting, then I'm going to clear coat him so that he still has this nice glossy finish. So. It should look pretty elegant. And I'm filming it so that way you guys can kind of see what the process is like and what I had to do to get the the paint effect on them. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I think that's pretty much it. I don't know why I'm rambling on making this so complicated. I'm going to add the paint on there and then hopefully it looks good and then shoot some clear on it. A couple of coats of clear. I'll probably do like two or three coats of clear coat on there. It's a small piece, but I want to make sure that it has that nice, like, expensive look to it. And then they could add it to their collection. And then hopefully we could take pictures. I'm sure she'll upload it to her Instagram, and then I can share it with you guys. Cool? All right, so let's get to it. Okay, so I'm going to work on scuffing this a little bit. I'm going to see which I prefer, the non-scuffed or the scuffed to apply the fresh paint on. Uh, I don't think adhesion is going to be a problem at all. I mean, I just painted this 12 hours ago. I'm pretty sure that the paint will adhere to this quite easily. I just want to see if I like the way that the paint goes on when it's scuffed or the way that it is now. So I'll do a test sample and I'll literally just do the half of the back, like right here. I'll sand this part, not sand this part, and then I'll do a couple swatches and see if there's any difference or if there's a noticeable difference. And for this, you don't want to add too much pressure. You literally just scuff it up a little bit. This is very fine grit to begin with, so. 
And I wear gloves because my hands are naturally clammy and I don't need any oils getting put on the piece and then having problems with the paint sticking to it. This paint is water-based acrylic paint. I try not to touch my face or anything or my hair while I'm doing stuff like this. That's where the oils will come onto your hand from, but still, nonetheless, better safe than sorry. Like I said, I just sprayed this about 12 hours ago, so the paint might not be 100% cured yet, but this is such a fine grit that this is only going to scuff up the surface, and that's quite nice actually. So let's do a quick little sample and see which we prefer. I separated the white into a few different spots here because I'm going to mix up a bunch of different shades of white, so I'll just add a little bit of black and basically make a couple different shades of gray technically light gray and I have some water in case I want to dilute it some some more even so let's start with this one we're gonna take a little bit of white tiniest bit of black a tiny little bit of black and then we'll create our first our first shade here and for this particular project, I don't want these colors to be 100% mixed. I prefer the the variants here that I'm going to have in an actual color because that way as I lay the paint on as I lay the color, I'll still get different different shades within it, which is what I want because I want it to look like a painting. Now, on a painting These colors would be quite a different array of shades. Okay, I think a color like that for like our darks. Um, I'll mix the light version of that color here. So you see what I'm saying? Like I'm gonna be working with these kind of shades and lighter even. So I think this is gonna work. So enough with the experimenting. Let's mix up a little bit here. Let's get some paint on this dog. Okay, so this is a color that I like. I'm just gonna mix some more into it now so that I can actually have some of the paint on there. See, it's a nice light color. This is what I'm going to start with. Alright, so I'm going to do a couple swatches here where I sanded. And a quick little one here where I didn't sand. And just see how the paint lays on there. And whether or not it will give me an adhesion issue. I want to show you guys what the difference, what I'm talking about here. Okay. So as you can see, I'm gonna make sure you guys can see this 100%. Okay. So as you can see, on this side, I didn't scuff. And since it's a very glossy finish, the brush actually leaves its strokes, which is really cool because it looks natural. And on this side, the color actually like soaks in a little better. There's less brush strokes. So while I love this, and normally I prefer this because I'm used to working on cars and airbrushing on cars and that sort of thing like I always prefer a nice flat even surface however in order to make this thing look like a painting I think the other one might be better now I would fear slightly that the adhesion between this new paint this new paint in particular and the white that was just sprayed a few hours ago I think that's going to be the least I think that's going to be the weakest bond out of everything else but I don't think it's going to be an issue. Like I said, it's still fresh enough to where it should soak in. And we are going to clear everything. So it will have a nice layer of clear coat over everything, sealing everything in. So I think I might end up just going with this because I like the way that you can see the brush strokes. So I'm going to let this sit for a few minutes and then I'm going to try and wipe it and see how good it adheres. The side that I sanded on should instantly be drier than it is. Nothing's coming off. 
and then perfect on here as well. As you can see, it's only been drying for about a minute, and it's already on there, and it's not going to be coming off. So I like this one. I like the strokes. So we're going to do it like this. We're not going to scuff it. The scuff would be beautiful if this piece was larger and I wanted it to have a completely 100% smooth finish. If that were the case, then I would do this, so that way it looks like it's painted, but it will just have a very nice, sleek finish to it. This one I want more to look like a painting on a canvas, so I prefer the brush strokes, and I, even though I will clear coat everything, uh, I believe that it'll give you the illusion that it's just like a canvas and that you can feel the paint on it. Although because of the clear coat, you'll run your finger through it and it'll be nice and smooth. So let's get to it. So you want to get a few spots like this done, all within the same color. And then you want to mix them up a little bit. That way you add a little bit of black and you change the color up a little bit. Not enough to make a big difference, but just enough to like layer it up as if you were working on canvas. So I'm going to add a few more patches of this color and then I'm going to start layering this up. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to add the darker colors pretty much wherever there's creases where shadows would naturally be. That way I just give it that illusion of depth and contour. And since they are darker, it's nicer that they go on the bottom as a base and then the lighter colors can go on top. Usually I know that people like to paint lighter colors because it's easier to put dark over light, but I don't know. I I like darkness as shadows and light to creep on top of the shadows. In this particular case, like I said, we're going to be working with grayscale, so I don't think we have to worry too much about covering or full saturation of anything. I think this will be good. Ironic how the pieces that you want to have more of an artistic feel to them are the ones that you can have more free reign with and be less cautious to achieve that exact look. Whereas something is like a clean cut portrait or something else that I'll work on, I have to be so cautious. With this you pretty much have free reign to do as you like. Another little trick that I like to do is I'll show you because I want to lighten up the front of his leg is I'll take a little bit of water without paint, dry a little bit off of it, and then I lighten it up where you can see the muscle of his leg. Again, for additional contour. <laughs> yeah, essentially I suppose you're just kind of washing paint off. Then the water dries off and it leaves a really nice color. I'm leaving the face for last because I kind of want to see what tone the piece has after doing a couple of passes like this. That way I can have minimal amount of paint. In the event that it ends up looking quite white, I can just add minimal paint to his face since that's the part that's going to be the closest to the eye and more than likely the part that most people will touch. The underside of his belly I'm not too concerned with in this particular case because once all this is dry, I'll flip it over and I'll give it a quick, a few quick passes, if any at all. Because, again, it's underneath those shadows and I'm sure I can get just, just the right amount of paint on there to give it the attention that it needs. So what do you guys think? Is this looking like a canvas painting in 3D? I really like it. I love working in grayscale, whether it be pencil drawings or uh, more custom pieces like this, we're happy, but I love working in grayscale. It's just like, I don't know, it's kind of like when you're just playing around on Photoshop and you just want to throw highlights and shadows at things. At the end, a lot of these paintings of canvas end up having like just like a chunk of white paint just kind of like 
So I'll make sure I do stuff like that too as we get closer to the end. This isn't going to take long at all. I mean, truly the the wow factor, the pop effect, that's all in just adding the grayscale tones on here. And it's enough to have people intrigued by the piece. On something this size, normally I'd like to use like even a smaller brush so that it looks like smaller strokes. But I mean, you guys know that you could just use the corner of the brush in this case and give it pretty much the same effect. So I want to make sure I stay in the lighter tones on the face. Just going to add a little bit of darks here under his chin and a couple in the folds of his eye and side of his mouth. Just to give it some dimension. I'm gonna do a little bit darker right on his nose. And his mouth here. And a couple of dabs of this in his eyes. Remember, it's the illusion. We don't want him to look, him or her, we don't want him or her to look too much like a pearl, but you do want to give it enough there to give it the illusion to have a personal connection with Gina and Jordan. Come back, get a little bit of white, soften it up a little bit here. Bring you guys in a little closer. Same with the inside of his ears. Add a little bit of water here. A nice dark, rich gray. I'm going to go in here with the dark. Maybe even a little bit darker than that. Because again, the last time I was there, I noticed that they're decorating a lot of whites and gray scales. So I want to make sure that there's a little bit of contrast on them so that you can see from a distance that this is more of an art piece, not just a figurine. Do a nice little blend out like that. Concentrating the darkness inside his ear. So you see what I mean? Because there's a lot of natural light there as well. Same as here in my place. So the natural light almost makes this dimension disappear. It's very hard to tell. It just washes out with white. So what we do is I add the darkness here and bring it back into the back into the scene like so. This. Get it right in that crease, come out with it. Mix in a little bit of white. Get the edges. And right here on the side of his face, because he has these little like dimples. I'm going to put some dark so that the dark goes in there. And then I'm going to take some white and slightly thin it out. So that there's not so much paint on the brush. And just wipe the top, very top surface of that off a little bit. Okay. Alright, now you can see once it starts drying... You see what I was talking about with the paint? It actually looks like brush strokes on canvas. Now, I don't want this piece to be 100% textured, so what I'll do is I'll still, like I said, I'm going to clear coat so it still has a nice, elegant, uh, more refined finish. A little bit more upscale than as to just leave it like this. Although this looks nice, 
It's just not my particular style. Unless, of course, you did have nothing but whitewash stuff at your house. But they actually have marble in their kitchen and such, so I know that there's some gloss that will be going into the into the decorating of that house. Which is why I want to give this thing a nice, shiny, deep, nice, reflective uh, finish. I'll do a little bit more of this lighter. See what I said on the face? I want to go with the lighter and only put the dark where I really need it. So it just it's going to save time. Whereas like now on the back, for instance, I can just come back with a little bit of lighter here and then start adding the lighter tones on top. Give it some more contour and showcase the dog's natural build, very muscular build that they have. For the least amount of shadow. It's the most boldest part of his backside as well. A little bit on the tail. And still add a couple more white spots right over the darks. Just to make it look like we like it was I mean just exactly what we're doing actually, just to make it look like it's brushed on. This particular brush stroke down here is a little too too noticeable there, so I will whitewash a little over it. And then we'll play with that once we start working on painting the underside of his belly. Same with the leg. This part of his leg is the closest to the person, so it's going to be the whitest, but we don't just want it to whitewash. We don't want to just want it to turn 100% white, so I'll add a little bit of blacks and we'll add some darker colors within the perimeter. This is a very nice way of adding a more upscale look to these super nice pieces. I mean, they're already such nice pieces to begin with, but if you want something that's more of a one of a kind and that's something that you can necessarily just buy at Michael's or Joanne or something like that. I'm sorry, not Joanne. Uh, what am I thinking? Hobby, Hobby Lobby. You could do something like this too. You don't have to be an artist or anything. I, I would never consider myself to be a professional painter or anything like that. And this is just something that I think anybody can do. I mean, this is, I think that this is a project if you have, if you have nice, nice taste and your home decor is quite upscale and you still would like to do something with like your kid or like a younger sibling or something like that, I think this is a perfect project for that. This is something that you, you'll you showcase and it'll always look like it's worth the money that you spend on it, of course, but you still have now that experience that you can have behind, like giving it an emotional connection to the piece that your younger sibling or your son or daughter or niece, like they, they'll totally like love hanging out and doing something else with you, especially after seeing that you have it on display along with everything else that you normally display. And then once they get older, they'll see in the, the how special it was to you once they start appreciating things that are a little bit more high end and more upscale and they'll notice that, wow, they've had this display in their house along with all their other beautiful decor, like, and I truly remember that and enjoy it. And I think uh, it's something nice, something very nice. It's a good way of like showing how art can bring people together and spend some family time working on something. Now we're getting to the point where I can start doing more uh, detail work. Again, add a little, a little bit of darkness here, just to kind of resemble pearl a little more. <laughs> so cute. Okay, now I'm gonna add some more white to start giving it that that paint look. A more painter's touch, like boom. So some defining 
brush strokes like so. There's always like a really cute one like up here, just, I don't know, just like that. Very rich, like that. They're not necessarily like, <laughs> I guess they're intended to be highlights, but for whatever reason, they just look so good. It's just like a nice brush stroke. Same way that we just did the highlights, I will do a couple of lowlights. Or shadows, what have you. Just giving it a more realistic impression. See, this way you give it you do a little dark in the eye from a distance, it kind of makes it look more like, a, like an eye. So then I come back and then I, in the area around it, just clean it up a little bit, tone it slightly down. So it gives you the illusion that there are in fact eyes there, even though we didn't necessarily color them in per se, we're just drawing a little bit more attention to the creases around the eyes. Very cute looking doggy. Perhaps a little bit more gray tone here to match. See, on this side, on this particular side here, it's a little bit darker than here per se, so just add a little bit more here. And then come back with a little blend. Just like that. Add a little bit of water. Blend it all back in again. So it's just a game of lightening and darkening up. Lightening it up and darkening it up. <laughs> or lightening it back up. Lightening it up and darkening it back down. Coming back with some highlights, natural highlights there. I absolutely love the way this is turning out. And then of course my favorite part is once I add the clear coat. Because then you have this, this paint effect, but then you have that nice, elegant, upscale, more refined finish. Ultimately, you want to just you, you want you want to make people wonder: Was this white to begin with? Was this gray? Was this was this black? You don't want that people to necessarily know what the base of this was when they see it. Because at first, from a distance, they're going to think it's white. Of course, it's just you're showcasing highlights and shadows, and therefore, once people get closer and they start to look at it with a more careful eye, you start wondering like. Wait, is this, was this, is this just painted? Like, I don't get it, but I like it. And that's the key, to make people like it. Art, you know how it works, art's up for interpretation. So all you really want to do is make sure that they feel something when they see it. A reaction, an emotional attachment to it, or what have you. Maybe just have them think a little bit. All right, so here's where we'll do a couple of the brush strokes that would give it the illusion that it's a painting because they're not going to just be there for highlights or shadows they're just going to be there to look like a brush stroke like so and you don't want to go too crazy with these these are the ones that will they can make it or they can break it 
I just want it to look like a brush stroke. So I'm actually going to paint something to look as if there was a brush stroke there. And have one on the eye, one here. In order to balance it, I put one a little bit lower in the light here. Then I have the underneath part of the eye. Just a couple of spots. Where it's just going to look a little bit out of place to someone who knows what they're doing, but to the average person just admiring, they'll be able to connect with it and say, oh, this looks like a painting. It looks like a painting that I saw somewhere. Something along those lines is what you're kind of going for here. belly here, a little crease, leg, now I'll take this darker color and I'll add a little bit of color in his underbelly. Again, we're not trying to make this too realistic because it is supposed to look like a painting. So just, just a little bit to darken everything up down here to give it dimension that way even if it's surrounded by everything white and in the spotlight there'll still be some darkness here so that as the whole depth doesn't get washed out so not so much for realism but more or less for uh, for display purposes same with the legs See, even though you know that they're not that far back there we still want to add a little bit of shade and, a little bit of shadows here in the event that it is uh, under a spotlight or anything like that. And if it's not, then it just looks even more like you paid more attention to detail. So it's a win-win. There's no losing. I'll actually do the same thing. I'll take a little darker color and I'll go mm -hmm. under. I don't know that one. Alexa, why are you always in my videos? Sorry, I'm not sure about that. Yeah, of course you don't. Anywho, I'll take the same kind of darker tone and I'll do the same thing here under the paws again just to give it a little bit of dimension a little bit of depth <laughs> on camera it's going to look like a lot more because I'm actually getting a little bit on the paper here down here so it looks like there's actually a darker shadow cast but it's not but yeah I would assume that it's going to be on a white shelf so since there's not going to be much of a shadow display on the shelf we'll just color the underside of the paw a little and We'll bring our own shadow with us, pretty much, is what we're doing here. So you have to think not only of the piece, but also where it'll be displayed and under what conditions it'll be displayed, so as to give it the, like, the best chance at looking good on display. Now, um, I've seen that some people do something like this when they want something to look like stone or concrete. For that, I would have used... Um, not only gray tones, but I'll also mix in a little bit of warm tones into it too to give it the illusion of stone. When I do just gray scales like this, this is pretty much just to give it an illusion of white because white usually comes with highlights and lowlights. So I like to stick to gray, gray tones for that. And I'll literally just use white and black. If I'm gonna do stone, depending on what kind of stone I'm trying to make it look like, if I want it to look like yeso or cast per se, I'll add a little bit of yellows and beiges uh, oranges, pinks, I'll mix colors like that. If I want it to look like concrete, I'll add a little bit of blues or greens, depending on the setting or where the piece is going. But in this particular case, it's going to be in display at a house with a nice, a lot of nice, elegant other works of art to display it with. So this, we just want to look like a nice white painted bulldog that came to life in paint format, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Now I want to take an overall look at it and see if this is where I want it to be. I think that I could do a little bit more. You see here on camera, for instance, you have this. This shadow. That's actually a true shadow because my natural light is behind me. So you're seeing a natural shadow. However, when you turn this thing to the side in real life, that's not so much there. In your case, it's white. It's literally just washed off. If I bring you closer here and I create a shadow in front of it, you can tell that this is pretty flat. So what I'll do is I'll take a little bit of this darker color that I just mixed and I'm going to put in 
a shadow line here that will resemble what you actually see in real life when there is a shadow cast on them. And by doing so, I believe that he'll carry a shadow with him, whether or not there's a light source hitting it. Like so, and then we'll whitewash it a little. Because again, it has to look like a painting. So we don't just want to add the shadow, but we want to add a couple of strokes there. And the best way to do it is to thin it out and then come back and add a couple of white, technically, highlights over it. Like so. And now turn on his side like this. See, there it is. As you recall, before it was whitewashed, it was washed out because of the brightness. So even with me here casting a shadow, you could still see that shadow there. So whether the light hits it or I create a shadow, either way, as you can tell, see? So with a shadow or with all the light hitting it, the shadow that we put in is now there permanently. So now even if there's no light hitting it from the front, it'll still look as if though there were. Now we're gonna do the same thing on this side. So we'll go a little dark again. We'll add a little shadow line here. And then we'll thin it. By adding a little bit of water to it. And then we'll add our whites again as highlights per se, as if you were working on actual canvas. Blend over a little. You don't necessarily want to blend it 100%, you just want to make it look as if you were you blended it on canvas. And then, take the white, which is supposed to be the true color of the dog in the first place, and there you go. Just Give it some shape there. In a brush like format. And there you go. Now he too has his, this side too has a little bit of a shadow here. So now, whether or not there's light, he'll still have his own shadow there. Okay, so I'm getting to the point where I'm kind of happy with the way that he's looking. I think the only other thing I'll do is I'll take a little bit of white, like a new color per se, I'll mix in a little bit of black to give it some change. Well, in case you're wondering what my palette's looking like here. I've never been one to keep my palette separated. Uh, even when I'm airbrushing, this is usually how I mix the colors. I just, obviously not on a plate, but I have uh, little open jars and eventually like all of them start taking a nice familiar tone because that's usually how the piece works. And if I needed to add red highlights over green or whatever, like I just, those are colors that I'll use throughout the piece. But anywho, so I'm going to take this and I'm just going to keep lightening it up until I find a... Yeah, this is kind of, oh, this is so perfect. Okay, so it's still not 100% mixed thoroughly, so you still get a couple of brush strokes that are darker than the rest. Now I'm gonna add the last final like brush strokes per se to make it look like a, like a painting. See, so it's not that I'm adding shadows to the top of his ears. I just need something to look like a brush stroke. I'm really OCD too. So a lot of times when I do stuff like this, I like to leave, like for instance here, I still left the original spot that we tested. The original two spots, like there's still parts of those peeking through there. These up here, like never gonna be all that noticeable because no one's really going to bend over to see the 
top or back of his head, but you'd still want to have something there. I'll show you what I'm referring to. It's there, see? Between his ears and along here. Right. Just to make it look a little like a more like a painting. Come down here a little. But I'll need a couple of brush strokes here. Okay, so now that I added those everywhere, now I'm going to take some white, and this will be, I guess, technically the true color of the dog. So you could tell that this will be the top. The painting that they have actually has rather large, thicker brush strokes, and that's kind of what I'm trying to go for here. I'm trying to just little blotches, basically, to give it a slight resemblance to their painting. Okay, so that pretty much took right around an hour, and uh, I'm going to do the final touches, and then we're going to clear coat it. I mean, this is exactly what I saw in my head. Like, it just looks like as if I would have handed them, if I would have taken a canvas and painted a French Bulldog, a white French Bulldog. If I would have taken a canvas and I would have painted a white French Bulldog, like, and pulled that out of the canvas and was able to 360 it, this is exactly what I would have wanted to do. This is exactly what I would have wanted it to be like. I mean, this is 100% a white French Bulldog. So now that I have the look that I want, now it's time to clear coat it. And this is my favorite part. This is what gives it the finish that I love, uh, the texture that I love, and it gives it that nice, fine, ultra fine, very upscale and refined um, finished look to it. So on to that. All right, so in order to clear coat this thing, I wanna make sure that I can clear coat underneath and everything too. So what I'm going to do is spray the bottom first and then put him down. But obviously if I sprayed his paws and then put it down, it would stick to whatever I put it onto or debris could stick to it, whatever. Like it could get messed up. So what I did was I rolled up these pieces of paper and now I can clear under here. I can make sure that I get completely underneath his paws and then I can put him down like this. I can put him down like this, and then I can still clear the under part of him without fearing that his paws will stick to whatever surface he's on. Okay, so that being said, uh, let me go spray some clear on this thing.